Medical sociology is the sociological analysis of medical organizations and institutions, the production of knowledge and selection of methods, the actions and interactions of healthcare professionals, and the social and cultural effects of medical practice. The field commonly interacts with the sociology of knowledge, science and technology studies, and social epistemology. Medical sociologists are also interested in the qualitative experiences of patients, often working at the boundaries of public health, social work, demography and gerontology to explore phenomena at the intersection of the social and clinical sciences. Health disparities commonly relate to typical categories such as class and race. Objective sociological research findings quickly become a normative and political issue. Early work in medical sociology was conducted by Lawrence J. Henderson whose theoretical interests in the work of Vilfredo Pareto inspired Talcott, Parsons' interests in sociological systems theory. Parsons is one of the founding fathers of medical sociology, and applied social role theory to interactional relations between sick people and others. Key contributors to medical sociology since the 1950s include Howard S. Becker, Mike Berry, Peter Conrad, Jack Douglas, David Silverman, Phil Strong, Bernice Pescasolido, Carl Mayer, Ann Rogers, Anselm Strauss, Rene Fox, and Joseph W. Schneider. The field of medical sociology is usually taught as part of a wider sociology, clinical psychology, a health studies degree course, or on dedicated master's degree courses where it is sometimes combined with the study of medical ethics, bioethics. In Britain, sociology was introduced into the medical curriculum following the Good Enough report in 1944. In medicine, social explanations of the etiology of disease meant for some doctors a redirection of medical thought from the purely clinical and psychological criteria of illness. The introduction of social factors into medical explanation was most strongly evidenced in branches of medicine closely related to the community, social medicine and, later, general practice, history. Medical sociology can trace its intellectual lineage to the late 1800s. In the 19th century, two nascent disciplines, sociology and allopathic medicine, began to cross paths for allopathic medicine. This time period witnessed the beginnings of medicine's ongoing attempts to consolidate its professional powers and social legitimacy. Meanwhile, sociology was beginning to emerge as a distinct discipline. The first publication which formally linked medicine and sociology was The Importance of the Study of Medical Sociology, authored by Charles McIntyre and first published in 1894. Two key books follow, Elizabeth Blackwell's Essays in Medical Sociology and the James P. Ward essay Medical Sociology. The first journal to focus on medical sociology was the Journal of Sociologic Medicine, which was published by the American Academy of Medicine, and existing for four years between 1915 and 1919. The American Public Health Association hosted a similar section of sociology between 1909 and 1921. It took another quarter of century before the next medical sociology journal would appear. The initial timing and brief duration of these links between medicine and sociology reflected a much broader transformation taking place within allopathic medicine and between medicine and society. As both rushed to affirm the validity of scientific medicine, as medicine grew in clinical effectiveness and organizational complexity, Complexity. The social psychological and behavioral sides of medicine began to lose attention, with instruction, research, and principles relegated to a second order of medical fields such as psychiatry and public health. Scattered sociology of medicine articles would continue to appear infrequently in medical journals between 1920 and 1950. 
1960, Austin Porterfield published what would become the first substantive disciplinary journal in medical sociology, the Journal of Health and AMP, Human Behavior. In the spring of 1967, the American Sociological Association took JHHB under its organizational wing where it was renamed the Journal of Health and Social Behavior. Elliot Friedson was the first editor. This same year also marked the first issue of Social Science and AMP Medicine, with its distinctively international and multidisciplinary social science focus. By the early 1970s, the medical sociology section of the British Sociological Association had established its own organizational footprint, and in 1979 published its own medical sociology journal. During the 1950s and 1960s, the field of medical sociology underwent an explosive period of growth before peaking in the early 1970s. During these two decades, the field enjoyed considerable academic excitement and success, including what today might be considered a lavish amount of grant support, both from private foundations and the federal government. At its peak in the early 1970s, 1970s, for example, the National Institute of Mental Health Subcommittee for Social Science Training was awarding 1,500 graduate student stipends per year, 80% of which went to sociology departments. The number of stipends was well in excess of what was needed to support medical sociology graduate students, and the entire field of sociology benefited from this philanthropy anthropic and federal largest. Even the founding of the medical sociology section itself and the ASA's decision to adopt the JHSB were underwritten by outside funding. Membership in the new ASHA section was mercurial. In less than a year, the medical sociology section grew to 561 members. By 1964, membership had soared to nearly 900. In less than a half dozen years, the field went from publishing introductions to the field to summative reviews. By the mid-1970s, however, there were signs of trouble. Established funding streams had dried up and were not replaced by alternative resources. Section membership had plateaued and coverage of medical health issues in flagship sociology journals, such as the AJS and the American Sociological Review, became more infrequent. Meanwhile, colleges and universities were undergoing their own upheavals. Faced with considerable financial pressures, schools looked to trim programs, and sociology was high on a number of lists. As one small but indicative example, Yale University's Department of Sociology, which has the first medical sociology program in the United States, decided in the 1990s to eliminate that program. The 1980s and 1990s were a difficult time for allopathic medicine as well. The rise of managed care, the commodification of medical services, and the discovery of medicine by Wall Street and corporate at America during 1985 and 1997 earth-shattering implications for the future of medicine as an autonomous profession. The 1970s through early 1990s also were a time of vigorous debates within academic sociology about the fate and future of allopathic medicine as a profession, beginning with Elliot Friedson's transformative profession of medicine and professional dominance. A number of distinguished medical sociologists in the United States and elsewhere began to debate the changing fortunes of organized medicines status as a profession. Once again medicine and sociology cross paths. It is worth noting, however, that by the time organized medicine began to mount a campaign to re-establish its professional status and stature, sociologists had moved on to other debates. Issues of identity and identification from its very conception as an academic entity. Medical sociology has been plagued by issues of identity and of identification. 
On the one hand, the study of medical and health issues offered sociology great challenges and opportunities. On the other hand, these same opportunities had the potential to strip sociology of its unique perspective. One hallmark of this tension is the now 50-year-old debate about whether the ASA's section should be named medical sociology, or whether it should sport some other marquee such as health sociology or the sociology of health and illness. Quote, Many of these tensions are reflected in Robert Strauss's famous distinction between sociology of and sociology in medicine. The problem is one of placement and perspective. The former reflects situations where sociologists maintain the disciplinary base and train the sociological lens on fields of inquiry for the purpose of answering sociological questions. The latter connotes a state of affairs where sociology Sociologists work, for example, in a medical setting and employ sociological concepts and perspectives to solve problems that are defined as such by medicine. Sociology of medicine thus became considered as more in keeping with the sociological tradition, with the presumption being that those operating from a sociology in medicine ran the risk of being co-opted or at least corrupted by the medical perspective. More recently, there have been efforts to retire this distinction by insisting that sociology has passed through its sort of in phase and has graduated into a sociology with medicine. Organized medicine remains one of the most powerful social institutions in modern times, forces of deprofessionalization notwithstanding. Furthermore, medicine has little incentive to welcome sociology to its table unless it feels that sociology can help solve issues or problems as defined by medicine. Under such circumstances, any working relationship between sociology and medicine involves considerable potential for sociology to undergo disciplinary co-option. Sociologists who work in medical settings must be particularly sensitive to these issues. Often they function betwixt and between, receiving little respect from physicians or from their academically based peers who consider their wayward colleges to be too applied, quote, whatever the particulars, organized medicine retains considerable institutional power and social legitimacy within today's society. Medicine has been able to establish its knowledge, skills, and culture as the everyday, taken for granted order of things and this is what makes the medical perspective so potentially corrupting. The move to introduce medical sociology into the medical school and nursing curriculum played an important role in the discipline's evolution as an institutional entity. The first beach hit came in 1959, when Robert Strauss founded the first Department of Behavioral Science at the University of Kentucky. Strauss also helped to found, in 1970, the discipline's first professional association. For Strauss, behavioral science reflected the intersection of medical sociology, medical anthropology, a medical psychology, and therefore represented a unique and transcending social science discipline. The field quickly established a presence within a number of medical schools during the 1960s and 1970s, particularly in those 40-plus community medical schools that were being founded during the 1970s and 1980s key themes. We see two emergent lines of sociological investigation as we move to examine the future of medical sociology, each related to the other. The first is globalization. It is clear that the world in which we live is going through major transformation. This is particularly true of health and health care. We now live in a world where the spread of disease is global and where the poor health of one country affects the well-being of others. Global financial markets and economic competition are challenging the ability of business and governments to provide affordable health care. As such, we can expect that as globalized 
globalization increases, so will its importance as a major theme in medical sociology. There are an increasing number of studies examining issues of health and illness in countries other than the United States of Britain. The second and related theme is complexity science. Quote, as argued by a growing list of scholars, and due to key factors such as the information revolution and globalization, and emerging theme within 20th first century science is complexity. One example is the study of complex health networks. While this perspective has been an important part of medical sociology since the 1970s, primarily in terms of explaining the role that social support and kinship networks play in promoting health and well-being, the latest advances in the study of complex networks are providing new insights into the processes by which diseases spread and the ways that health care providers can improve the health and well-being of large populations. As these two new themes suggest, the theoretical framework of medical sociology continues to change to meet the new and contextually grounded needs of health care providers and patients. Medical sociology is, and remains, a theoretically rich area of study.